We have a variety that we call Shangi, a popular variety that is taking about 80% in the country. And also we have a variety called uh, uh, Kenya Karibu. This is a variety that has got uh, a lot of foliage. We also have a variety that was released uh, just recently. It is called Unica. It is one of our best performing varieties even in this demo. We also have our next demo where we have a variety that we call uh, Tigoni. We have Kenya Mpia and we also have a Dutch Robigin. Basically we have over 60 varieties in the country and uh, the breeders are continue breeding various varieties and uh, what we are showing here to the farmer is that these varieties can all perform under different ecological zone and also if well taken care of and a farmer have observed the agro, uh, agro uh, agronomy management he'll be able to get good yields and uh, what a farmer should do basically first a farmer should source for clean seed there are various seed merchants in the country Caro being one of them we do produce basic seed at the center and we have our sub-center, we have a sub-center in Jabini, that is in Nyandarwa County. We have a sub-center in Molo, that is in Nakuru County, it is called Mariba, Maridas. We have a sub-center in Meru, a, a center that is called Maliba. So, and we have other seed merchants like ADC, we have uh, Kisima Farm that also do uh, seed production, potato seed production. What a farmer should do is that you source for clean seed and uh, on the other hand a farmer should ensure the farm is clean, from, free from diseases and basically nowadays we have, there are other emerging diseases like PCN, potato seeds, nematode, it is one of our key diseases that have emerged recently. We also have uh, the bacterial wheat and uh, farmers, especially them that are doing seed production, should make sure that uh, the, their farms are clean or free from these two diseases. The other thing, after you ensure that your soils are clean, you should make sure you should take your soil for soil testing to check the, the minerals that are present. And the, uh, the, the, person, the person who will have tested your soil will recommend the rates that you should apply. The spacing for potatoes now, after ensuring everything is clean, you have sourced seed, there are minerals that are there, the spacing should be 75 by 30. That is, between the rows is 75 and between the tubers is 30 centimeters. And while planting, make the rows very well. It all depends whether the, the weather is favorable in terms of rainfall. Is there too much rainfall? Is there less? If there is no rainfall, make shallow, uh, shallow fallows so that the rainfall, the little rainfall, will be able to get the tubers. After that, you... Uh, put your fertilizer and the fertilizer rates after of course there is generally that recommendation that the soil the person who has tested your soil will recommend but generally what we the, the, the general recommendation we say 200 kg in kilograms of DAP or NPK in one acre piece of land after that what we you do is that you apply your fertilizer you now cover your potatoes and you wait for the potatoes to emerge. After the emergence, you combine weeding and adding up. You add your potatoes well, just like the way we have done. You add and you weed, you remove all the um, weed that is in your crop. And after weeding, after emergence, you wait and you scout for the water. If the weather, if the weather is favorable for a disease that we call late blight, make sure you apply a preventive fungicide. After you apply for pre preventive fungicide, after 45 days, you do your weeding, and weeding, second weeding is done at 45 or two months old crop. And make sure you also, at the same time you are adding up, you remove all the weeds, and uh, after that you now come and uh, also scout whether the weather is favorable for um, blight or uh, infestation, you come and spray your fungicide. And you make sure when you're spraying, there. it all depends whether if the weather is favorable, you do a, a cycle of seven days, 14 days, depending on the weather. So, and you make sure when you're spraying, you do alternative spray. You should not continue spraying for using one fungicide or using one fungicide uh, in all the cycles. You should alternate the fungicides. And in this case, 
at this time you should pray, spray a curative because maybe probably your crop has started being affected. And after that you wait for your crop to mature and you you make sure that your crop mature completely. It all depends whether are you going for seed or are you going for where potato production. If you are going for where pro potato production, wait for your crop to thinness up to maturity and after that you come, you harvest your tuber. It all depends whether you are selling at the farm gate level or you are waiting for your potatoes to to to, 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 to waiting for your potatoes to stay that you, you, you sell at a later date. After that, you store your potatoes well. Where potatoes are stored in a dark store. Uh, farmers, we advise farmers to look for the cheapest way to make where stores. And a where store should be a dark store. And we advise our farmers to maybe make from the mud store, make sure that your store is a bit lifted and the the tiber you have used has some holes to allow aeration from from below and for air circulation and to keep your tubers fresh after that you can also sell your your tubers and now for the farmer who is doing seed production we advise the farmer to come and do some scouting in the field especially when the the, the crop has started flowering you come and do your tuber scouting and in this case, you come and, uh, as I have done in the farm, if the tuber is egg size, let me just pick my tuber. If the tuber is egg size this size, you will be able to, these are the recommended sizes. And if three quarter of your hill has got this type of uh, tubers, you are now ready to dehome your crop. Dehoming is whereby you detach the tubers from the foliage itself. This is so that the tubers cannot, you can stop the expansion of the tuber. So what you do is that you pull out your tubers and you are able to detach the tubers from the, from, from the, tubers from the foliage. And after that you will be able to wait for two weeks and they will have hardened their skin. You come, you do your harvesting and you store your tuber in a diffused light store. Why in the diffused light store we allow the tuber also to start cheating and also be able to, to, to break dormancy in the diffused light, light store. So basically those are the procedures that uh, a farmer should observe. Some of the factors that farmer should consider are where should I get my seed from? Is my farm clean? and uh, is my soil uh, good am i in the right ecological zone basically we know that uh, potatoes grow in uh, high altitude areas areas above uh, 1800 or 1500 meter below be, below below that uh, that altitude the potatoes might not do well so we the, 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 the potatoes if a farmer is in off of of that altitude he will not be able to get optimal yields. So uh, those are the factors that a farmer should consider. Altitude, variety, is my farm okay? Am I in the right position? What we have realized as breeders and uh, as people who advise farmers is that our varieties are consumer driven. Basically and uh, consumer driven meaning that uh, our, our potatoes are determined by whether the, 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 the consumer is ready to consume these varieties. So basically what we do is that um, we have different varieties like Dutch, uh, like Shangi. Shangi is a popular variety that is eaten by all. It is 80% grown in the country, in all the counties. So it is grown everywhere and Nyandarwa is the leading county growing potatoes. We have a variety called Kenya Karibu. It requires heavy rainfall, basically grown in a more region that is in Nakuru County, Nyandarwa County. We have this Unica, a newly released variety. It is basically grown by, it has started picking up in the market. We have a variety called Dutch Robigin, basically grown by farmers from Bomet County. And uh, it is basically grown by, for um, crisps, by, grown for deeper industry or tropical heat to make chips. So it is, our varieties are consumer driven. 
not basically by the ecological zone. It is what the market dictates. A farmer, one thing he should consider, who is my consumer? And if your consumer is in Mobasa, uh, of course Mobasa will eat in any variety, so that one should not worry them. If you are producing, you, a farmer should consider, am I selling at farm gate, am I selling at the market? So the farmer should consider who is their consumer, that is, should be their worry. So after knowing who is your consumer, after that now you, the farmer should grow any variety. But if you are selling at farm gate level, the variety that is speaking in the market is variety shanky, especially in, in our major potato growing counties. What we advise our small scale farmers is to just uh, uh, imitate this model of growing potatoes in small plots. Because what we are avoiding is the continuous cropping that our farmers have adopted. Uh, all our small scale farmers have uh, adopted the mode of continuous cropping and relay cropping whereby the diseases build up in their farms and they are not able to get good results and after getting maybe they can get even crop fa um, crop failure in terms of because some of these diseases you cannot even consume the potato so what we uh, we are advising our farmers is to set small plots so that they may be able to crop rotate with other crops that is uh, potato um, crops that are not in the same families as potatoes it, like for example carrots, uh, peas, maize, beans, etc. If a farmer is from Narok, a farmer is from uh, uh, Nyandarwa, we get an even farmer from Nyeri. It all depends with how, your management first and your, where you are based because uh, the yields depends and is your seed clean. So those are the factors to consider. So basically what a farmer should uh, uh, get is between 80 to 60 bucks per what per acre 80 to 60 bucks that is a hundred kg back 80 to 60 bucks per uh, acre the spacing should be 75 centimeters between the rows and uh, between the hills it should be uh, 30 centimeters you can see from this hill to the other hill some of the potato management uh, is that you add the crop at the right time time you combine adding up and weeding at the same time you also source for clean seed and you store your seed well before even before planting if you buy your seed make sure that you store it well otherwise it will be colonized by uh, by aphids that also brings in diseases like uh, uh, viruses and also at planting make sure that you manage your crop in terms of fungicide application so that uh, they will not be infested by late blight that can also make uh, you have a crop failure or you have no crop by the end of the day. I think the industry is doing so well and uh, I'm happy with the way everybody, every other stakeholder is interested. One thing you should know is that uh, it, it takes less time to grow potato, uh, unlike maize that takes a full year in some regions and six months or so. Within three months you have got a, a product to sell, so meaning you can get and you have you have four, you can be having four cycles depending on how you do your planting. If you have irrigated agriculture, which we are also promoting, you can do four cycles of planting, unlike maize where you have only one season or two in a year. So, I think basically for small scale farmers, this is a the, the, the way to go, growing potatoes. And by the end of the day, you a farmer, our farmers will you know poverty will be eradicated in our country so i think the industry is taking up uh, the challenge of growing potatoes and promoting it in different regions i think uh, uh, our pot uh, and that's why we are uh, uh, making forums like this where we are able to tell our farmers that they have used their potatoes for long as seed they have been recycling their seed time and time again and uh, they have they are not aware of these viruses that makes the potatoes to degenerate that uh, the, the the potatoes have no potential has no full potential to, to, to produce more seeds. So what we are advising our farmers is that to go and source clean seeds that have full potential even from other stakeholders. How many times should a farmer recycle potato seeds? We say minimum three, three seasons. If you buy your seeds, three seasons minimum. 
and uh, you should uh, the farmer should go and renew their seeds. We have uh, in, uh, new varieties that are resistant to a, a disease like late blight and uh, this is one of the varieties that resist this Kenya Carib Kenya Mpia is one of the varieties that was released to resist blight so and uh, Kenya Karibu also does resist blight so those are some of the technologies that Calro and other stakeholders on board have been able to release we have several seed merchants in the country and I think much of this information, we, we can get it from National Potato Council that has got a, uh, this information. It has been able to pull all the seed merchants in the country. But I mentioned a, a cooperation like ADC, it is, it is also bulking seed. We have a Kisima farm in Meru, it is able to bulk. And we also have ourselves, like Karo, we have our sub-center in Jambini, we have a sub-center in, in Meru called Mariba, we have a sub-center in Molo called Maridas. So we have been able to, you know, to try and, um, and, uh, and uh, meet the demand that our farmers, uh, the varieties or the seed, what the farmers requires in the country.